everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of The Vile Files, Going Deeper Edition. I'm your host, Nick, Ellie, Amanda. Okay, got that. Great. How are you ladies doing? Good. I guess. Good, you guess. I guess. I, I was, it's less so me not being good. It's more so me being like, God damn it, Allie. You say the same thing every time. People are sick of you. Are, are you accepted the fact that you're doing improv with Amanda? I'm so excited. <laughs> Allie and Amanda are, are taking improv together. Well, we don't know because I have to audition. Oh, that's true. Which to which Amanda told me yesterday and I literally said, I have to audition for prison. Well, it's <laughs> it's funny though because I was like, it's the easiest thing in the world just to make sure you're not like super unself-aware and crazy. And then Nick was like, well, I failed that the first time. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I really failed it. I think the guy... I was told, but that if you I fail it, you failed. can't do it again for three months. Yeah. No, you can do it three times, and then you have to take a break. No, I had to wait three months. The website said if you fail, you can try again yeah. in three months. What? But then I was told I should not have been failed, and that I was uh, a natural. <laughs> I think it's great that you guys are doing it. You're getting out of your comfort zone. I want to die. <laughs> yes, and just remember, yes, and uh, we have a great episode for you. Lots going on. Obviously, with the Vile Files, we had the Bachelor finale recap with Sheena yesterday. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Wow, what a finale. Uh, I know we didn't bring you any of the Bachelor cast this week, but fear not, because we have the exclusive podcast interview with Tino next week and the exclusive podcast interview with Jason the following week. And this week, we have the one and the only Harry Jowsey giving us the exclusive on his breakup from his girlfriend, Georgia, who they met from their both being on Too Hot to Handle. They weren't on the same season. But, but they met when he was interviewing her on yeah. a podcast. Anyways, he, uh, he has a lot to say about that. And we got to know Harry a little bit. Interesting guy. Yeah. Interesting guy. I really enjoyed him. Totally. Yeah. yeah. We also get into... Uh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you make fun of me? Well, because I was thinking... I was like, I had other like things racing through my brain, but they weren't like coming into words. So I feel like... It's totally. Totally. She at least gave you a response. I was just like. Yeah. yeah, I feel like for some reason, Ali and I are in this weird stupor right now where we're just like. Yeah, I think uh, I think improv groundlings will be good for you guys. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. It'll. Uh, we can also. You, you know that thing you're like complaining. You always say the same thing. This will give you Thank some God. more material. Would have been a lot cheaper for you to just buy me a thesaurus, but uh, glad we're doing this. Got to invest in your people. Got yeah, to invest huh? in your people. So yeah, we got Harry. We also get into uh, the whole Adam Levine of it all. I also feel like we should touch on now the Love is Blind situation. Yes, we should. Because Deep D and Kyle broke up. I watched the, was it after, like, what was it called? After the Altar. I was weirdly captivated by it. See, everyone I talked to that watched it, we were all like, this is so dull. Compared to season one yeah, after yeah. the Altar, it was <laughs> disappointing. It, it felt forced, but I, I'm, I'm into the pettiness that is the Shane and Natalie drama. What I will say, though, also, can we talk about Sal's girlfriend? That was one of the most energetic entrances i've ever seen and she was like i mean it's like that's her a big tough moment in reality tv it's a tough environment yeah. to be thrown in with a group of people who have all bonded over something you weren't there for and it seems like she was she it seems like everyone who speaks about her speaks very highly it seems like she has great energy i my jaw was on the floor when at one point they were playing a game and she like kicked her whole leg up do you know what i'm talking about little elfish moves like full like full split in the chair and i was like wow i mean she was going for it I, I think that's the feeling I got from this reunion is like everyone really knew they were being filmed. That's the energy I felt. Yeah. yeah. The thing I couldn't stop thinking about was how for so much of it, Natalie is really, when, in all of her sound bites, I think she speaks so carefully. Yes. Like she never shit talks. She's always like, well, if I were in their shoes, I imagine I might. Like she's really, really precise and careful with her words in a way that I admire so much because I feel like it'd be so easy to just like, once you get into it, like kind of get loose lipped. And she is so like, yeah. But I think to her detriment, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's 100% sincere. Here's what I don't get about the Shane and Natalie of it all. Shane, clearly we've had him on the podcast. He is a- Open book. Open book, interesting guy to his own admission, uh, a bit messy, a bit reactive. Has eight shots of espresso a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And some of those qualities are things that he probably should work on because it can affect relationships and things like that. But, you know, we always talk about how, like, relationships uh, take two people, you know, to work. And, and when they don't work, it usually takes two people as well. But the way Natalie talks is as if it's all, it's all something Shane did. And the only thing I don't get, it's just like, 
to me, like I think, I, and I said this on Instagram, my biggest takeaway of that whole drama was these two couldn't be more incompatible mm -hmm. and wrong for one another. That's but the challenge of like anytime it doesn't work with people, I feel like we want to villainize one person and have one winner and one person, like one, like. Well, and also so the contestants want to do that. Fault. Yeah. I think, like I it's mean, that's all on one or the other. And I'm like, well, maybe they just literally brought out the worst in each other. Sure. But like Natalie seems to want to vilify Shane. Yeah. And that and it's just like, here's what doesn't add up with Natalie. And, and you said it. It's just like, how is someone who comes across so refined, so polished, and so well spoken, why does she keep going back and keep entertaining a relationship with someone she describes as all these other things? It doesn't add up. Because I think that was Shane's main thing on the show was just he felt like there is this perception of like people not humanizing her and kind of just viewing her as this like beacon of like, like just very virtuous. And I think she is virtuous in a lot of ways, but I think he felt like he was the only one who was like viewed as like messy or emotional or just like human and capable of making mistakes yeah. where it felt like nobody would believe that Natalie did because she does have so many like qualities that result in her being very like elegant and very emotionally intelligent in a lot of senses. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It, yeah. After watching this, it kind of comes across as a bit of a front because it's like it doesn't add up. If like, if you're so in touch with your emotions and you're so emotionally mature, why do you keep going back to this clearly toxic and incompatible relationship with Shane? Like it can't all be Shane's fault as to why you guys keep trying to make... Like it's a takes two to tango situation. Yeah, it's just it's like you, you don't get to just act the innocent and these text messages these flirty dms i don't know shana she's a, like engaged with someone else like it's, greek man <laughs> I, I just like you're kind of making a big accusation for something you're not really giving a lot of details on you're not showing any like wh why doesn't she just show us the dms well you know? she said she said he unsent them there was no screenshots before them right yeah i don't know i think it's all very convenient that i do think that's kind of an interesting question though of like is there ever a situation when it's appropriate to unsend Instagram messages for the purpose like of your partner not seeing them? Or like, is it always shady when you unsend Instagram messages? Like, is there any scenario in which that's like not a shady thing Unless to do? Unless there's like a typo. Oh. Like oh, I've you sent might... one before where there's like an awkward maybe typo. You... If I'm like sliding into someone's DMs, I'm like, that's not a good first impression. Maybe you changed your mind. <laughs> this girl who claims to have had an affair with Adam Levine, I reached out to her via DM, invited her on the podcast. I was like, I want to hear her story. And after further reflecting on the whole story, I was like... I'm going to go ahead and unsend this because I don't know if I want her on the podcast. Like you want to platform her. Yeah, I've, I'm not so sure. So I unsent it, you know, um, maybe she screenshotted it. I don't know. Maybe, like, You're it next. <laughs> it was a, no, it was a professional <laughs> DM. Like it was like, hey, you know, I heard. You're like, saw your I'm DM. not pregnant, yeah. but I'm going to name my kid Sumner. <laughs> yeah. But in yeah, a relationship, I, do you ever think it's acceptable? Sure. I don't know. There's situations for everything. I thought Natalie was going to come on this podcast. We we talked on the phone about it a while back. I haven't heard from her. I wasn't sure if it was the right situation. I wanted her to, to feel comfortable, but uh, it sounds like she didn't want to come on or I haven't heard from her, but I'd love to, I'd still love to have her on. But it just, it doesn't add up. I have some questions for her. It's just like mm -hmm. how, you know, like you keep saying all these things about Shane and yet, but you're part of this. It just doesn't yeah, make like sense. Yeah, like for me, it feels like there's a few missing like logical steps that I would love insight on. Yeah, and you're making a big accusation by saying that Shana and Shane are in this secret relationship all while she's engaged with someone else. Like... She's moved on. I don't know. It doesn't uh, It doesn't add up to me. And then the deep D and... Kyle. Kyle. Oh. It felt forced. When they were talking about defining the relationship, they both seemed like... They didn't want to mess with it. They, both, they didn't want to take the they, next step. They both looked like they wanted the other person to explain why they shouldn't do it. Right. That's like, how it, Like a game looked. of chicken. Yeah. Well, and I even felt like the, you know, after the episodes came out and certain news outlets too were like, they're together. And I was like, mm -hmm. and then like, I was reading into these articles and people are like, well, and they were just quoting after the final, after the altar. And then they were like, and Deep D posted, you know, a slideshow of photos from behind the scenes of filming. And I'm like, well, that doesn't confirm a relationship. And then suddenly it's coming out that Kyle's been with a new person since like the summer. And so that's the hard part when you film this stuff so far, like when you film it and then you don't air it for so long. And I understand that they were trying to hype up season three and they kind of waited. But I'm like, we have two couples that are now divorced. Kyle and Deep D aren't even together anymore. It just was kind of a flop. That made me Judith sad. Netflix. Yeah. yeah. 
when um seeing Nick and Danielle talking and Danielle being like, it's nice because when you're married to someone, you can say, we're going to plan this trip for a yeah. year down the line. And you know who you're going with. I, I am, Watching that made me so upset. I'm, I'm the most sad about Nick and Danielle breaking up. I really liked them together. And it, I think you see so much insight into a couple when you see them host together. Like, I think that's when you really get to see kind that of wig. them like... She pulled off that wig oh like it was God. her day she job. She went balls to the wall oh, with that costume. Oh, she loves a good so costume. So much respect. She loves a good costume. So yeah. much respect. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it's just like knowing what happens. And I think with Ayana and Jarrett, it was a little bit more... I think you could see the the very real things that were keeping them apart, but like... Also seeing those like intimate couple moments of them giggling about him pooping while she's in the shower. You're just like, damn. That was your damn? I well, was more, <laughs> it, okay. I was just like, because that that's a high level of intimacy. That's sure a is. really hot. Like that makes Might me. Might be too hot. <laughs> Let's move on to Harry. I was going to add something. No one needs to hear it. Let's go. All right. Well, well, that's our, our, our thoughts on the love is blind of it all. I'm excited for season three. We'll have to figure out how we uh, intertwine it into the show. I don't know. But we will be discussing it. I'm sure. I hear it's a fucking mess. Dallas. I hear it's a mess. Everything's bigger in Texas. All right. Well, uh, again, we got some big episodes lined up for you guys coming up. I hope you guys really enjoy this one. Uh, we enjoyed talking with Harry, a delightful person. Send in those questions at asknickacastme.com. Please, 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 please pre-order my book. Out October pre-order. 4th. Pre-order. <laughs> please pre-order. <laughs> I can't talk, but turns out I can write. I think, uh, yeah, it's uh, all about relationships and dating. If you are listening... To the show, because of Harry, we do three shows a week. We have uh, an Ask Nick on Monday where people call in and, and ask for uh, share their stories, and we give them some advice, and we have these sex and office hours. But uh, this book, if you're out there dating in the world or you're in relationships and you have any questions or, or any struggles or you feel confused or powerless, I wrote a, a book basically all about my mistakes and uh, share stories from people who call in the show, my stories. Uh, and talk about things like hookup culture and fuck boys and situationships and players and defining relationships and getting over people and knowing when uh, whether to stay or go in relationships. And I'm grateful that the people who have read it have given it some glowing reviews. So it would mean a lot world to me. Just go to vilefiles.com. Uh, you can buy the book uh, from Amazon or indie bookstores. Uh, you can buy the audio. You can buy signed copies if they're still available. And you can still register, I think, for your... Self Love Day, which is uh, FaceTiming with me and a hundred dollar gift card to treat yourself on whatever it is you want. So vilefiles.com to pre order the book. I'm I'm literally begging. Literally, I promise you that you will read something in this book that will be worth twenty five dollars. It will save you twenty five dollars of something. I was trying health. to regurgitate some of Nick's advice to a friend on the phone this morning as I was driving here and I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop. There's books in the studio. And I sent her like a photo of five pages because it's all sectioned really well. And her literal response says, woof, Nick, right to the gut. So if is you too want to feel that way. Is that good? <laughs> you told it like it is. It was exactly what she needed to hear. It's the hard truth. Impactful. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Someone wrote, I started reading uh, Nick's book, Don't Take Drugs, Happy Birthday, and it's incredible. I never felt like another person has been able to mirror the way my brain works so accurately. One, starting off with the book title, it's really just more of a cliche attention grabber. So don't let that deter you if you may be some sort of self-proclaimed individualist. Like uh, she can be at times, apparently. There's a lot of aha moments. But she writes a glowing review. Just pre-order the book, please. You'll be glad you did. I promise. Harry Jowsey, everybody. All right. Away. Ooh, what more can I say about away? I'm about to pack for New York, and I'm uh, I'm in good shape because I have an away suitcase. I got a bum outlet on the plane, and I was about to be incredibly upset because I needed I was going to do work on my phone, and then oh, I was the like, bum outlet, yeah. And then away has the you can have a battery pack charger conveniently locked into the suitcase, so I was able to use my phone for the entire like six hour flight from Boston to L.A. because. Away had me covered. It's amazing what you can put in their Away suitcases. Their 360 spinner wheels guaranteed the smoothest roll ever. Ellie puts her dog on it. And she balances like a champ. Yeah. We roll through that airport like it's our day job. We do get a lot of looks, but I think it's a good thing. If you're l looking for new luggage, you have to get away. You have to. And also, if you're not looking for new luggage, but if you there's should. something about your luggage that you know take you could deserve better, your mm -hmm. this is a really good investment to make in yourself. It really is. The zippers don't break. Nothing worse than having that zipper that busts in the middle of it. Oh. Uh, my way suitcase, it seems brand spanking new. I've been beating up on it for two years, and it couldn't be more durable. And they also 
have a lifetime guarantee. So amazing. You get a hundred day free trial on everything Away makes. A hundred days. It's incredible. Take the product out on the road, live with it, travel with it, even get lost with it for a hundred days. If you decide it's not for you, you can return any non-personalized item for a full refund during that period. No if, ands, or asterisks. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases and bags at awaytravel.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's awaytravel.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Harry. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> Is that how we kick it off? <laughs> yeah, we just start. <laughs> It'll uh, sound good when the episode drops. Like okay. we'll do a whole thing. We'll talk about you behind your back. We'll oh, preview it. And then we'll jump right into the episode. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah that's good. How are you? Uh I've been okay a bit up and down, but things things have been been looking forward. I'm excited to be here. We're doing it. You're doing my Spotify live show yesterday when this comes out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. doing your show. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing Whenever your... that is. Yeah. Is yeah. it it's tomorrow? I, hope. I think I'm recording tomorrow. Yeah, but yeah. it's a live show. It's a lot of fun. But we Great. my audience is super vulgar, so you have to prepare yourself for that. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've been good. I'm uh How's broke... your heart? <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Sad. It's been uh for people that well, no, actually, no one knows this first time I'm talking about it, but myself and my amazing ex-girlfriend, Georgia, or girlf- ex-now girlfriend, Georgia, we broke up about, <sighs> oh, damn, I was really trying to hold my, it was a, it was a while ago, well, it's been on and off for a while, no, it hasn't, what am I talking about, I'm all over the place, sorry, I'm a bit of a mess, it's, it's okay, it's been, uh, it's been, it's been tough, we, we broke up a little bit, of, a little bit ago, and I think things have been a little bit rocky since uh there was a little bit of distance in our relationship she was also from australia yeah she and the thing is she's so amazing like she's i think when people meet georgia and anyone that has met her or ha- have had her in her life she's such an amazing glowing like i i call it like bioluminescent have you seen like when people go like the water in the bioluminescence and it like lights up like blue yeah, yeah. Actually, that's it how happened outside my uh, house in Venice once. Yeah, that's how she makes. I think that's how she makes everyone feel. Like she's just such an incredible person, and we've had such a crazy like five month relationship. Like uh, we met on my podcast, and I guess maybe that's why I kind of feel comfortable with talking about it on a podcast. You met. Uh, she was a guest in your podcast. Yeah. Okay. First time we ever met, and we, she was on season three of Too Hot to Handle, and you were you were the OG. Yeah, yeah, it was a little bit, it was a little bit random because she was, yeah, here visiting a guy that she was seeing, and then she come on my podcast, and I was like, damn, like she's amazing, like she's, we, we just clicked, we were laughing the whole time. Was she, she was dating someone when she came on your podcast? Well, she wasn't, she wasn't dating someone. She just like, I think she was just trying to see if it was gonna work out because she okay. like, she uh, travels a lot and she's like very spontaneous and like goes with the flow. So she, uh, yeah, flew flew across to see this dude and then come on my podcast. And I think we just had so much fun and she was going to come to Coachella with us. And then ever since that point, we kind of just got glued to the hip. And yeah, it's just, uh, I don't even know where to start with this, with this whole situation. Cause it's not a bad, the, the, I think the biggest issue in this whole relationship is it wasn't a bad breakup. And I wanted to get your advice on this cause it was such a good breakup. If, if there is good breakups, like we sat down in the car and i remember looking at her, i was i'm such a mess when it comes to talking about like any of this stuff especially with her and i realized like i'm the problem in this relationship and and i just have i, I want to preface all this stuff with i'm really not an easy person to date like any like a handful of my exes are like a google search away and i think that and i and i also i talk about my entire life on podcasts and online and yeah very, you're pretty you seem to be an open book from afar i don't yeah. this is my first time meeting you <laughs> yeah yeah. I've certainly seen you around. I know a lot of people who know you. <laughs> yeah. And yes, from afar, it seems like you're very, at least the impression you give off is you're very open about pretty much everything, everything. as it relates to your, especially specifically dating life. Yeah. And I think that's a bit of a, like, I think that is a red flag in myself. I certainly can empathize and understand why people who date you could struggle with that just because you don't want to necessarily know everything about your partner's past relationship but why do you do you specifically think that's a red flag about you or just something that is a challenge in a relationship because i think there's a difference yeah i i think it's i think it is a challenge like i think it's a massive challenge because you know especially georgia like she's very new to this industry and you've got you come and meet someone who's like i just don't have any secrets and like i've found that 
because I started on a show that was all about dating and I'm just super open about that stuff. And I'm just like, I'll tell you guys everything that's going on because I don't want any skeletons in my closet. And I feel like I owe my audience that like they give me so much of their life by engaging with me and I just want to give it back. And I think, yeah, looking at that whole situation is it's really taxing on someone's like on someone that you're with. Like it, no one really deserves someone to just have their their there'd be like podcasts or things where people like ask me about my sex life or people that I've been with. And I know like, I think looking at the relationship, I wouldn't have appreciated at all, like hearing about like my partner be like so open about things like that. And I think maybe just because I've been in such a direction for like my entire, or like the past couple of years, like I'm going to tell everyone everything that it is like, it, it, it really took me a, a while to like, stop and like look back and be like okay like this is actually a little bit disrespectful to uh to my partner and she doesn't she doesn't deserve people or she doesn't deserve to turn on the radio or like listen to a podcast and, and where i'm like oh i spoke really well about this relationship and then here like the first 10 minutes is me just like doing like locker room chat yeah you know but is that something you guys fought about a lot no it was to be honest it wasn't because we've been a, we've been apart for a little bit i the best thing that's been ha the best thing that's come out of this is i've been self-reflecting a lot because the worst part is like you don't have anyone to talk to and like update your day and like get excited about and so like i just kind of like sit in my thoughts and i reflect and i'm thinking about like things i could have done better and things that wasn't actually okay especially to someone as precious as her like she's she's such an incredible person there was a couple of moments where she pulled me up she's like hey like i would appreciate it if this didn't happen and i think the issue is i'm like oh well it works for me so like i, I get a little bit combative mm. towards towards this, the relationship and and that because i'm like oh maybe she's trying to change me and i think it was definitely like a, a a terrible way to to look at any situation especially when it's a normal thing to to not be okay with that type of stuff but it, that to be honest that was never really an issue like we had a, a couple conversations and i cut it out um it really come down to the the biggest issue was I just couldn't figure out how to prioritize Georgia. And I think that was such a, that was where things started like really like ripping apart because I, I'm, I'm learning to, I, I have a lot on my plate and I think everyone does and it's no excuse, but I'm learning, I've been studying to, to become an actor for, for a while now and it takes up so much of my time and especially my spare time because I'm reading books, I'm trying to, I want to pay the respect that acting deserves and be good at it and as well as like my job with like hosting and podcasts, like I'm very sporadic and all over the place and my schedules, is, it isn't the easiest to deal with and it again, like it probably sounds like, uh, like it's an excuse but for me, in my head, especially in the relationship, when i spend like my evening and morning with georgia like i'm giving her my spare time and i'm giving her like for me it felt like effort but then i for I, her it felt like leftovers exactly for yeah. now i look back and i'm like oh i wasn't putting in like it it doesn't for me it feels like it's i'm giving her what i can but for her it looks like oh you actually don't care and you just want to like me to come over and sleep yeah like do you feel like this is something that other girlfriends would have the same frustrations about I, I, I often feel like if if not that any of us want this to happen but if if we lined up all our exes they would generally have all the same complaints about us <laughs> yeah, <terrible>. right it's <laughs> terrible Bad idea visual. yeah yeah <laughs> you know they would all be like do they they do that right yeah. like yes <laughs> oh yes my God. i hate that <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, they're the worst. Do you feel like that's something that you struggle with? Because it sounds like to me, like, which I think a lot of people have is that, I mean, it's really just a conversation about setting up expectations and respecting boundaries with yeah. each other. A lot of couples don't do that uh, early in relationships. Yeah. They might have some basic ones like, hey, don't fuck other people for a monogamous relationship. <laughs> but like, other than that, like they don't really have a lot of upfront conversations about like, you know, I'd really appreciate it if you do X, Y, or Z and vice versa. Yeah. And then you guys decide if you're okay with the expectations that your partner has and the boundaries that they want to set. And it seems like you struggle with that because obviously it seems like you're a pretty free spirit. You seem like yeah. a hyper extrovert. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if I'm getting any of this right. <laughs> no, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and that can be obviously very charismatic. You seem like people I know who know you all say like nice things about you and just like you're a joy to be around. But my guess is on a one-on-one -on -one situation, mm. trying to like get your attention and trying to like connect with you I seem like I wonder if that could be a struggle with the people you date. Yeah, I for sure, and I think that was also one of the issues because when I would be like, when I go to dinner with like my best friend, like I or my roommate or whatever, it would be like, 
it, say if I'm going to dinner with Georgia, I'm like, oh, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to see this friend that I haven't seen in yeah. a minute. And she's like, oh, well, you kind of just like ruined our date because you've <laughs> invited like two people. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm just like eliminating like, well, I'm not eliminating. I'm like seeing as many people as I can, keep everyone happy and and keep things moving forward. And I, I, I think that was, to be honest, like the biggest issue in, in the relationship, especially because, yeah, I just, it just, it, it really isn't fair on anyone, especially someone who's being so patient, especially patient with, like, with me. Like I'm just, it was really tough on her. And I think that's why I decided to, to break things off. I, I sat down, we had one argument over something stupid I did. And, um, and I, and I said, uh, the whole day I was like, I was reflecting and I was sitting on it and, and I said, to, said to her, I was like, I just don't want to continue to hurt you because I feel like it's, it's going to get to a point where it's just going to, my, my issue, I think that I'm, I'm really jumping all over the place. Cause I, I think I have so much to say, but I also don't want to overstep or, or hurt or, or say anything that, that, that isn't true. I just, uh, the, the biggest thing that, that would happen is it would be like, I think every two days, something, I would do something that would that would upset her, whether it's like someone's photo or follow someone I shouldn't or post a TikTok that shouldn't have even been posted at all or like little things like that. And it got to a point where, again, like being like very sporadic and like all over the place, I'm like trying to continue to, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's, I feel like I'm not making any sense at all. No, I, I feel like you are. I mean, I mean, I get that you're trying to find the right words. Yeah. But it, I mean, it kind of sounds to me, and just correct me if I'm if I'm <laughs> wrong, we talk a lot about this on the show. Yeah. What I'm hearing from you is that like, how old are you? 25. You're 25, yeah. You're in a very selfish point in your life. There's things you want to do that you want to prioritize. You have personal goals. Mm. And it sounds like obviously you love love and you love women and you love connecting with people and you love all the things that come with dating. Yeah. But the challenges of being in a selfish point in your life is that it's hard to prioritize other people. And, you know, my next question to you, honestly, would be like, uh, you're single now. Do you have any kind of personal goals around, like, do you think you should remain single for a period of time? And if you got another girlfriend at any point, like, why do you, like, what's your purpose? And what has, been, actually, let me ask you this. Yeah. What has been your purpose, do you think, for having a girlfriend the past few years? Like, when, you ha when you're in a relationship, do you have a goal for that relationship? Yeah, I think... It's going to sound really corny, but the biggest thing I was manifesting, like just having a best friend yeah. that I could like on weekends, like prioritize, like, let's go here, let's go do that. And in my head, it sounded so cool. And then it finally happened. I'm like, damn, I got my best friend. We have the same music taste. We laugh at the same things. Everything's like just so perfect with her. And then it come down to like, okay, you actually have to do this shit. I was like, oh, fuck. Like I again being like super selfish with my time and i it's crazy you say that because i did put that out i every week i write like five things that i'm grateful for on my whiteboard mm -hmm. in my kitchen and that was like the top thing i was like you have to be grateful because you're being selfish with your time because again i'm in like a very big building stage and i think she is as well like she's very fresh to all this and she's like really finding her feet but the, yeah the purpose was like finding a best friend and having that but then i again i didn't realize like it, it does come with a lot of work and a lot of uh energy and and really trying to think more about just just myself and i think yeah yeah well, i mean because like well that could be fine too like you know we have like friendships you know you want someone to connect with well when it comes to romantic relationships and like i hound in this all the time is again we we often don't sit down when you, you meet someone you like them oh, this is great like i like you let's let's yeah. date and we, we often don't talk about like, well, what do you want from this relationship? Because yeah. like you just said, like you were looking for someone to connect with in the moment with more of a, well, that's all I, all I know is what I want right now. Yeah. And that is to connect and have a friend. Mm. And a lot of other people who are dating, they want that too, mm. but they are, they have a goal in mind. That goal might be stability, like a long-term monogamous relationship, marriage, family, kids, you know, everyone's different, especially nowadays. And it doesn't sound like you guys did a lot of talking about like what you guys wanted out of this relationship long term yeah or, or maybe you avoided it because <laughs> if you don't talk about it like it's always going to end up with different expectations right um yeah. because what you want there's nothing wrong with what you wanted but if you guys aren't in line you know if she's like i, I want a, someone who makes me feel like a like a big priority in their life you know yeah. hey you have other things going on but i kind of want to feel like number one on a regular basis and that yeah. obviously is it's going to be a struggle for you it seems like at this stage in your life yeah yeah I, and i and it, i don't think it's fair especially on her but the thing is like we were talking about kids we we're talking about getting married it, 
we it was when I went to Australia, like it was I don't know, it kind of happened like really quick because there isn't anyone else that I like I I think about in my life. Like I just she's such a blessing and such a I don't know, like a a light beam is what I just how I feel. And the I think the hardest part about this breakup is going like cold turkey I've, and that's what i wanted to get your advice on because mm -hmm. it it hasn't been a bad breakup like we sat down we had the conversation and she went off to new york and was having having a good time with her friends and i've just been such a such a mess uh I even like we don't even listen to john may together and i put john mayer on and i'm like fuck like <laughs> that could have been such a good memory yeah, john mayer's good like yeah. sit there i'll be in my car i'll be like driving i'll be like, I would look across, oh, she used to like laugh at me here and then like in the morning wake up and I'm like, damn, like she used to like call me gross because I like fart or like whatever. And I just had all these like, I'd be, it, it, exactly how a movie is. Like when you look back at their like fun parts of a relationship, I'd be walking around my house just being a sob. And I guess at that point uh, when all that kind of was going on, I'm like, damn, like I just really want to tell her, like I just, I really do miss you and I really miss what we had. I started therapy, which has been, which has been really good. But the issue is again. The, well, the point I'm getting to is we broke up. It was really, it was a good, it was a decent breakup. But it's just been such a sad thing. And then I relapsed and I hit her up, and then we hung out again, and we both realized we still love each other. Like, how do you, how do you not, like, how do you stop, like, how do you go full cold turkey? Because it's, it's really impossible. Like, I, especially if, if things are. Things ended with just so much love and like care for each other. Uh, it's hard. It's not impossible. Yeah, I think it would require you to be a little less selfish, <laughs> um, <laughs> because every like I don't doubt that you care about her and yeah. you love her. But it sounds like and I'm just trying to pick up on the things that you said is that in a relationship, you couldn't meet each other's needs. Yeah, right. And I'm sure she didn't meet your needs all the time. Your needs were I need I want the freedom to kind of have friends come and go. I, I want, like, that was your need. It didn't match yeah. with her need. Her need sounded like I wanted, you know, I want a little bit more privacy. I want a little bit more alone time. I want to connect a little bit more. And like, listen, like, two people can have insane chemistry, a love for each other and a lot of respect and still not be compatible long term. Right. And that's, I think that's a bummer and it's sad. You get heartbroken. But I think if you truly think that right now, at least, especially right now, that at the end of the day, despite your love for her or for each other, it would be incredibly selfish for you or either of you to keep reaching out to each other. And a lot of people done that. I mean, fuck, I've we've all done that, right? Yeah. That's how you go into these like breakups that turn into like, yeah, well, like we've been broken up like for a year, but like we hang out every day and we have <laughs> sex and like we, you know, I bring like, uh, but we're broken up, and then, and then it turns into like this weird fucked up situation. <laughs> and that's usually because it it requires obviously two people who are probably both being a little selfish because you know you give into that you know uh, that weakness i talk about it a lot in my book too but like think about when you break up right and in your situation is a little different but even if you were someone who you're like oh, fuck i i just i want i can do better than this person yeah. not better but like i just i want out of this relationship whatever and maybe you've been in a relationship for a long time. And you're just thinking, I'm gonna get on the dating apps and like I'm gonna meet some new people and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, like, and then you can get out there and start dating. You're and you know, welcome to like 2022 and dating, and you're just like, fuck, you know? And it's just yeah. like fuck boys, and I'm everyone's non-committal, and like yeah. she's like, wait, women are fuck boys now? Like, what is going on? You know, and it's just like people are you you start you start negotiating with yourself about what you used to miss right and then you you romanticize about the good stuff you conveniently forget the bad stuff yeah. and then you reach out and and it's usually because you're bored or lonely and i think it's it requires some like self-discipline and a little bit of selflessness of the person that you say you love and respect because if you love and respect them then you wouldn't reach out because you Damn. know that at the end of the day all it's going to do is create, you know, at first you'll have the initial hit of like dopamine of excitement and you'll embrace only to realize that, you know, you can't get back together because you can't give her what she wants or vice versa. Yeah. And then it's just like this cycle of hurting each other, even though you don't mean to hurt each other. <laughs> and it just goes on and on and on. So I think if you truly had a mutual breakup where you're both happy, I think the best thing my advice to do would be to respect that and respect her and actually not reach out even when you really want to. Damn. Um, and not even all, at like 3 a.m. No, <laughs> oh, that's the worst. <laughs> um, and you would only reach out when you really deep down, if you yeah. ever thought that you can meet her needs as a partner. Yeah. Because other than that, I think it would be incredibly selfish of you. Damn. 
I'm being very selfish recently, huh? <laughs> I mean, listen, uh, 25 is a great time in your life to be selfish. Yeah. And I think it's the best time in your life to be selfish. But I think you just have to be honest and upfront about where you're at. Yeah. And like, again, like, I think it makes a lot of sense for you to like, the type of relationship you desire right now in your life makes total sense. Like, I honestly think given what you want to do with your life and where you're at, that's smart. Yeah. But you have to, I think, be upfront uh, about it with the people you hang out with. Like if I, if all of a sudden six months from now, I'm like, you know, you're, I'm following you and you're just like, hey, I got a new girlfriend, Harry Giles, he's in love again. <laughs> I'd be curious of like, what's changed, if anything, in your life. Yeah. And if it hasn't changed, I'd be really curious if you've had a conversation with this new love of your life about like what it takes to date you. Yeah. And if you've set those upfront expectations about like, listen, like, what I want on a partner is like that best friend right now. I have a lot of friends. Like I, I'm not big on like making my, my girlfriend like the biggest priority of my life. Like yeah. literally saying that so they can at least receive it and then decide for themselves if they want that. Because most people don't have those conversations. You just say like, I like you, let's date. And then they find out that they're not a priority three months in. <laughs> and then they get frustrated and they're like, well, wait, I thought I was gonna be a priority. I'm your girlfriend or I'm your boyfriend. And then that's when the, you know, the conflict happens. So yeah. I would want for you in your next relationship to at least be upfront with whoever that is about what you're looking for right now in a relationship. And that could change, that could evolve. Yeah. But like the playing house is you like when I call play house when you talk about like marriage and kids. Oh really? It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Who doesn't yeah, like talking about that shit? And you send every night at each other's houses. Like, yeah. like, we, you look at your children's pictures. You're like, you're hot. I'm hot. Like we're gonna have beautiful kids. Like yeah. what should we name them? You know, like that's no, it's fun. Terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I've done that shit. I was about 25. Um, yeah, and uh, and yeah, you get caught up in it, right? And then, but you realize that's not actually what you're looking for right now. So it's just trying to have those conversations. And then, you know, you've opened this podcast talking about how much you love and respect her. Yeah. And I think you have to really show that by not giving in to reaching out to her because truly loving and caring about someone is caring about how your actions are going to affect them, not just telling them you love them. True. Yeah. Yeah. It's just uh, my, my two cents. Yeah. So this is the only time I'm ever going to speak about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, yeah, I, I 100% get that. And the, wor the worst part is like with this whole... Uh, this whole breakup is we've had our, the mo the best communication after we've broken up. Sure. Like, like we've spoken. I don't know why. I don't I know, know, I'll tell you why. Because now happen? you finally understand each other's expectations. Yeah. You finally were probably like, I don't know if I can give that to you. Yeah. And vice versa. And now you're actually operating with information. <laughs> Before you're just like, we should date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're hot. You're nice. You you sparkle. You make me feel good inside. But yeah. like, I don't know anything. You know, you had neither of you knew each other. You, ne neither of you probably really knew like each other's like love languages. And I don't mean like, oh, I like, you know, but you, truly understood yeah. that. Like truly, I don't mean like, yeah, I like physical touch or I like quality time, but truly. Fuck, you just called me out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had to say that. that was the first thing we said to each other because I'm like, oh, we should talk about love mm -hmm. languages. And then she's like, ah. Oh, well, she she started to explain that uh, physical touch and quality time wasn't, and then that was all we had. And then she's like, "Oh, actually, maybe they are my top two. And then uh, she went to, back to Australia, and I went to Europe. And then we we lost both of those. So we we're both like fully like I don't like what the fuck do we do? Because I don't I don't know how else to like show you that I appreciate you. So it, I don't it, when you're in the moment though, like how do you differentiate? Like hey, like. I, I think this is my love language right now, but like, because I, I didn't know. I thought quality time was like my yeah. number one, but. I find that out too. I think you you check in, you keep having conversations. You, I, I would like, I've had that conversation with my girlfriend where it's just like, I mean, that could change too, because like, yeah, you're, you know, you could be dating someone where uh, I, I could get busy with work or uh, like I could have, like connect with new friends and enjoy friendships, you know, or she could, you know, meet a lot of new friends and enjoy that. And then you realize, I don't feel like I'm getting the quality time that I need. Even though maybe in the beginning of the relationship, I never thought to mention like, oh, I want quality time. Yeah, That can change, right? Because you can go from like feeling smothered to feeling like, well, wait, why well, do I need a hug? You know, <laughs> like, and so I think, I think, yeah, I, got, I, like, I think a lot of people will go in early in a relationship and go like, what's your love language? And then you're like, well, I took a test two years ago online and it tells me like, I like gifts. <laughs> 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 And then we we're just like, from the from from that point forward in the relationship, you're always yeah. like, so what's your girlfriend's love language? And they're like, oh, she likes gifts. But like, I think that can change. Mm. I think it can evolve depending on the relationship or how much time you're spending with each other. 
And I think not enough people are checking in or just saying, hey, can I like, can we talk? Like I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little insecure about our relationship right now. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not saying it's your fault. Not, I, I don't even know. I'm not saying it's anyone's fault, but it's how I feel right now. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if we could talk about it and, and figure out how we can, I can feel like I'm, how I can not feel like this. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know if a lot of people are doing a ton of that. I know I didn't do a lot of that. Not or, at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, it's a tough conversation. Like, yeah. It's awkward. I, like, and I think any of these conversations have been like really difficult because like how do you I, I'm I haven't been very good at and I think that wasn't like one of our strong points as well because we communicate very differently like if she has a problem she has to sit on it let it develop like get the initial emotions out of the mm. way and then write or like speak about what she has to do like whether it's in like 48 hours or like a couple of days for me I'm like tell me like yeah. I, I need to know so I can so I can figure it out and move on like I want to put it to the side because the th I think maybe that was also one of our downfalls as well like anytime there was an issue I'm like hey like can I can we talk about it and get it out of the way so that we can go back to being happy because I don't like this feeling and I think me also being very like like let's let's figure it the fuck out is probably like a little bit too much as well yeah maybe I mean I think that's pretty typical in heterosexual relationships I think I think a lot of men are guilty of trying to be problem solvers. I mean, I, I've been like that. Yeah. It's like, I like to just figure it out now. I mean, I very much relate to that feeling. Right. And a lot of women I've dated, you know, it's not always the same. You yeah. Know, like, I want to take a moment. My therapist told me that if you start fighting uh, and you're like, in the first 10 minutes, if you're just like at each other's throats, that you you definitely, you you should stop and you should time like take a pause because wow. you both like refer you you both like mentally are back in this kind of child like state of mind yeah and then you stop trying to like resolve conflict and you start trying to win and that's something i've tried to do which has been a struggle for me because i'm more like you yeah you're just like i want to resolve this but yeah. what's helped me and maybe you can try this in the future is when you're in a fight and you you're like how hey, we need to take a time out you it's like you just stop and acknowledge that like i still love you and we'll get through this I'm really mad at you right now. I'm sorry, or you're mad at me, but like, and I, I really, ugh, you know, but like, <laughs> I do love you. Yeah. And we'll get through it. And just know that, you know, just know that it's a priority for me to solve this problem with you. Damn, this is so good. Um, <laughs> this is great advice. I, yeah, I've Can't wait it, to man. never use it the next four years. <laughs> <laughs> You want to take my book? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a few. <laughs> um, I learned these all the hard way, man. Wow. Uh, and therapy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm glad I, I signed up. So <laughs> so you just recently done started therapy? Yeah. I just, the, 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 with the breakup, I just re been reflecting a lot and I was like, I need, for you, man. I need to talk to someone. And I've just been, uh, one thing I, I never would do is like, uh, I'd never like let my emotions come out. I just be like, cool. Like I have to put this like brave front on for like social media, whatever else. And then I'm kind of with this recent breakup. I'm like, why do I? Why am I making myself do that? Why don't I just cry, figure it out, and like talk to people and talk to my friends and and let them know that I'm I'm actually not okay. Um, I'm and, really glad you're getting therapy. I mean, just in general. Yeah. Because <laughs> I also like I'm I'm also glad for Georgia. Yeah. Because I feel like the read I have on you is that like someone like you, you're describing, you kind of bottle this up. And I bet the person you feel the most comfortable talking about your feelings is whoever your girlfriend is or the yeah. feel you, the person you feel most emotionally connected to. And like you said, unfortunately, you're not, you're not with Georgia now. And I'm willing to bet that she's still, if there's, who's the person in this world that you feel most romantically connected with today would probably still be her. Yeah. And so what you want to do, my guess is when you feel like that is reach out to her. Yeah. Which as we've discovered, we're not allowed to do that. Do. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot of people do that, right? Yeah. We will uh, rely on our exes and the people we've built these emotional connections with because we don't know who else to talk to. We're afraid to talk to our guys about it, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like, hey, man, I'm sad. Yeah. And, um, and um, so the fact that you just have, you're going to therapy, I think is great. And I think is a, a selfless act in your part. It's not only for yourself, but for her. Yeah. Because now you can reach out to your therapist when you want to get things off your chest, <laughs> yeah. as opposed to the girl who like also is trying to heal from the breakup yeah. herself, you know, but the challenge is, I think, you know, she, like when you, when you end a relationship, you're trying to heal and then that person reaches out to you and you want to be there for them and you think, oh, we're going to reconnect. And then it, you just end up <laughs> yeah. like realizing we're still not compatible yeah, yeah no it, it's it's honest i think this has been the toughest one as well just just purely because of that like whole situation i'm like i just want to tell you that i'm upset and i know you're upset as well but it's not fair and then we end up like relapsing and 
Let's start from the start again. <laughs> what are you uh, most insecure about yourself? Because you uh, come across as an insanely confident person. <laughs> oh, um, wow. And but yeah, I was at a party. Uh, did I tell you this already? No, no, I'm just like, where are you going with this? I was in, I was <laughs> I'm in, excited. <laughs> Story time. I was in at, at, in New York in Fashion Week, and I was at this like kind of fancy exclusive party with all these cool people, and there is this person that looked just intimidating, yeah. you know? I could tell that everyone was intimidated by them. And I just thought to myself, I wonder what makes them sad, you know? Wow. And it made me, it made me <laughs> less intimidated by them, yeah. you know? Because I looked at them and I just really focused on them. And I was just like, I imagined them being really sad about something because we all can get really yeah. sad. And anyways, I'm just curious. <laughs> As There's someone, this poor guy at this party, just like Nick's, like staring at him. Yeah. Like, what are you sad about? <laughs> what are you sad about? I wanted to walk up to him and be like, "Hey, what makes you sad?" First question uh, in the yeah. urinal. <laughs> but for someone who I don't think people, you you seem like an incredibly happy person. Yeah. Uh, and I I'm willing to bet people love. Like I'm the opposite of you in that sense. Like people like me, but also like no one. I'm never when someone throws a party, no one's ever like, "Let's make sure Nick's there." Never. <laughs> In the history of parties, <laughs> like oh, we, Nick can come. I like Nick, but yeah. like I bet when people throw parties, you're on the top of that list because oh, wow. you bring a certain level of energy to parties and you bring a certain level of excitement. Yeah, because you're always like, ha "Am I right about that?" I <laughs> yeah, feel, yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> so, but what makes you sad? Yeah, because I don't yeah. think people ever wonder if you're sad. Yeah, I, I also I probably. I probably um, play into that a lot as well, like on social media, because I'm always like, oh, if you, yeah, if you, if you're sad, just think about happy things, or just stop wasting time being sad. I always like do dumb stuff like that, which is terrible advice. Never take my advice. But I think the the thing that really makes me the, the saddest is just thinking about Georgia with like going with being with someone else. And I think that's I know it's very like relative to to right now. Another thing that really makes me sad is losing my mom like mm. like very deep but like just not having her as like a best friend and just not having her like around like she's the most important person in my life I think that makes me really sad um what worries you about yourself i think not um putting in uh all this hard work for it to not like pay off i think that's what really worries me is, is sacrificing so much like i don't drink i don't go out anymore I'm literally like a granddad i, I stay in I just want to focus on this career and, and trying to get myself cemented and i think the biggest thing that really worries me about myself is i've done all these like sacrifices and if it doesn't pay off then what the fuck have i done I've just wasted like the, my prime time i think you're gonna be fine <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i don't know how it's gonna work out yeah you know my guess is it's probably gonna work out differently than you imagine yeah. but if you are truly like dedicating your life to being successful i have a feeling you're gonna <laughs> figure it out God, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good read. I like that read. Yeah. Do you think when you're single that you have more career opportunities? Yes, for sure. I think in reality, reality shows, f for sure. But I, um, yeah, but it's it's not the direction that I want to go in. And, and also one thing for me that has been really hard, especially on Georgia, was I don't want to tell anyone anything that I'm doing. And I think that's really difficult in a relationship because I'm so afraid of, people just putting energy into it or telling the wrong person and that dream like evaporating. And I think that was also like one thing that like really hurt her because I'd have some exciting news and I'm like, oh, this is really cool, but I'm going to tell you about it later. And that would really, like that would piss me off so much. And it's not fair on anyone, especially someone that's like- She wanted to sh you to share yeah. exciting news with her. Yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm very like superstitious about like- I hear, I'm, I I, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I don't want to tell anyone anything until it's done yeah. because I don't want anyone to be like, I'm going to put like, I don't know, because I feel like everyone- There's a lot of over-promise and under-deliver in LA. Yes. So I I, yeah. I recognize wanting to be the opposite. But, yeah. <laughs> but that feels maybe like you don't trust her in that I, moment or- Yeah, I think that was definitely one of the biggest things is, you know, she's telling me everything about that's going on in her life. And I'm just, I'm not even giving her like any, you know, sense of kind of, well, she obviously knew everything that was going on, but I wasn't telling her like things that I'm working on, things that I'm excited about. And I think that was also like, that, yeah, that was a bit of an issue because, you know, why am I not being vulnerable with the person I care the most about? Yeah. Just because I'm afraid that they're going to put their energy into what's going to happen and it's going to evaporate, like silly. Yeah, my guess is from hearing what you talked about is that she probably felt like close with you, but also like wasn't able to connect with you yeah. the way she wanted to. And then it probably was a more of a struggle for her to see that you connected with other people the same way you connected with her. And it ne you never, yeah. you know, it's just like, well, what is making our connection more special? Yeah. Other than... It's crazy to say yeah. that.
Yeah, no, I've, I, that's 100% like spot on. I think that maybe because I'm the same energy around everyone, it's just kind of just like, oh, well, it's kind of lame. You know? Yeah, honestly, I just think it comes down to where you're at in your life. I think you're just in a very selfish point in your life. Yeah. And I don't mean that as a criticism. It's just a fact. And so I think right now, the only real number one is Harry. Yeah. Which is, again, fine. It's just as long as other people are under that same wavelength. Because everything else, I think... You got, you got Harry's needs, you know, mm -hmm. all your personal goals. And then you have, you know, you, the, and then it sounds like your friends are really important to you, your mm -hmm. connections. And then I think it's hard for you to like still have a, like a one B, yeah. be your girlfriend. It's just like, it's just when, more. Ha, ha, when's the, when do you think is the best time to, to settle down? Like when is, do you have to be, is there a specific age? Where when you're, you're like, when you're willing to make other people a priority, when you're willing yeah. to say, when you're willing to make compromises and sacrifices, when when doing like when when your partner says i really need you to do this and instead of you feeling like i don't want you to stifle me i don't want you to do this i feel like you're trying to change who i am there's a level of acceptance of wanting to do that for that person because the goal isn't for you or her as individuals to get what you want the goal is to like do what's best for the relationship yeah you think of you two together as a team and if it doesn't benefit the team then it's not benefiting you guys as individuals. But right now, it sounds like that's not what's going on with you in your life. Yeah, so spot on. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's, that's re you're really good advice. Your list is very blessed to have you. I, I've, uh, I'm, I'm just a little older than you. So. <laughs> yeah. I fucked up a lot. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had uh, Hannah Burner said to me, she's like, you're going to be great when you're 30. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Yeah, no, you're going to be 35. 35? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think you're great now. Yeah. But you're, yeah, you seem like you have a really good heart and you seem like you mean well, but I think, and you're really honest about being selfish. Yeah. You're just not as upfront as you need to be. Yeah. I, yeah. I, looking back, I should have just been like, but at what point though? At what point do you bring it up? Because like like right away like on the on my podcast when i first met her like guess what i have to be selfish yeah <laughs> i mean at the point where you meet someone yeah like and you guys are talking about like hey i like you you know like yeah i think there's something here yeah i think if in the future three or four months from now you meet someone you're gonna meet someone you're out there you're good yeah. looking you're gonna meet other good looking people <laughs> that's like you know, hot people dislike being like, fuck, you know, I just feel <laughs> something. I don't know what it is. It's like, you're both beautiful. Um, and you're going to meet someone. And so you're, next time you connect with someone, I think, yeah, you need to say, listen, like, I, I know I'm in a really selfish point in my life. It's been a problem in other relationships. I don't know if I'm in a position to prioritize anyone else really but myself right now. And especially if like what I'm looking for in a companion right now is like, mm. does someone kind of like be there for be there for me kind of like at my convenience and I'm looking for someone who's like okay with that and someone who also is in a selfish point in their life who has other priorities and other needs and, yeah. and like is looking for me to be there for them at their convenience and if that's okay with you let's hang out Damn. Okay. that's what I would that's what yeah. I'd want for you that's my hope for you in the future next the girl you meet is to actually have a conversation that sounds something like that when I turn 30 oh <laughs> when I start dating it, I, I made it also made a rule. I'm like, cool, like after this, I'm not going to date anyone until I turn that 20. Would make, I mean, I, I'm not big on like till you turn 30, <laughs> but I, it sounds like yeah. you being like you purposely being single right now would, would be like to your benefit. Yeah. That's, it sounds like it aligns with your other life goals. Yeah. From what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to be able to like enforce that boundary for yourself? Well, I, again, like, my intention with breaking up with Georgia wasn't to be with anyone else. It was just to be by yeah. myself. And but you're going to meet someone. But I, the thing is, like, I don't go out. Like, I don't. Okay. There, of course, there's going to be people that are going to pop up and whatever else. But my goal isn't to go and like hook up with someone or to. No, go no, I know, I know that. But you, what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. it's easy to set that goal when you have no one right. in mind. Yeah, yeah. It's harder to enforce that cuz like what that goal yeah. is ultimately a boundary. You've set a boundary for yourself is I'm going to I'm going to end this relationship with this amazing person that I love and respect but I realize I can't give her what she needs. Mm. And so like you you decided for yourself I want to I'm going to focus on my career I'm going to be single. And that's just a, that's essentially a boundary right. for yourself. And it's really easy to set the boundary, much harder to enforce. And it only <laughs> like to enforce it means meaning someone, <laughs> yeah. liking them, yeah. and then decide as much as I'm attracted to you, I'm either going to be just clear up front with you or I'm just going to say, I, I can't give you what you need. So like, here's what I can give you what you need. We can hook up, we can fuck. Like, 
like we can like hang out, but like I will like I'm not going to be in a relationship. And then you don't do the boyfriend and girlfriend things that confuse them. You yeah. know, you know, you don't you don't talk about like future things. <laughs> you don't introduce them to like the person like no one's ever met. I only introduce special people to this like friend. <laughs> And they're just like, well, Harry said he didn't want to date me, but I met his best friends. You know, yeah. uh, you don't do that. Damn, you're, you're calling me out, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyone who comes over to my house, I'm like, yeah, my mom's never met anyone before. <laughs> <laughs> because it's one of those things, right? It sounds like you're a person who really cares about people, but it's easy to say you care about people and like, and really, but also it's harder to really show it in the moment, especially yeah. when caring about someone else comes in conflict with your needs in the moment. Yeah. And your needs in the moment might be just wanting to feel some sort of connection. And that's the hard part about being single. Is you get lonely or bored and we give in to like those feelings and then we want a connection and then we'll like negotiate with ourselves and be like, well, you know, maybe I am ready. Yeah. Maybe this is special. But nothing's really changed in your life in terms of the goals that you've set for yourself. Damn. And you're not 30 yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, the thing is, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to hit voice that now that you say it like this. Yeah, I just, I just, I guess I just have to be, uh, try and be strong on on what's what's going on. But Again, like I'm, I'm not really meeting any new people. I kind of keep my circle like very small, but it, obviously, I'm, you could meet anyone anywhere. Yeah. So, I don't know. My goal, my goal isn't to. My goal is to stay on the course and be selfish. And this is the biggest sacrifice I've ever had to make for, for anything. So just yeah, respect that. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I think you're gonna be alright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> uh, have you been following this Adam Levine story? Oh, did you see his statement today? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I saw a very good take on that. This um, did you see the you saw the TikTok from the girl? And you see the second girl? I, I I'm aware of the second girl. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw the second girl, and everyone's like, "Girl, like you're just talking to yourself." Because she she even he even was like, oh, "I don't make out with anyone other than my wife." And then she sent like four messages. She put her account on private. It was super cringe. She was just being like super normal. But this other girl, apparently, like she it was just messages. They never like hooked up or anything. But I read I read but, this. Yeah, it, I, I first saw it. My first thought was like, I should have it on my podcast. Uh, <laughs> that would be a great episode. Yeah, and then I kind of thought about it more. It seems a bit, she she took the ad approach of, she, she tried to make herself seem to be the sympathetic character in this story, which yeah. I think a lot of people struggled with. My only sympathy goes towards uh, Adam's wife. And their kids. Their family. Yeah. yeah. That's the only person I have sympathy for. Yeah, I don't know. Her releasing it, I, here's what it doesn't add up for me. It's like, why did you, did you have to make a TikTok? <laughs> you couldn't just, was that the best way to go about this? <laughs> yeah. Could just shut him a message like, hey, this, yeah. this is, like, why, and also like, did someone call did her he, I don't. I don't think she thought much. I, I think uh, this uh, Sumner person, girl, mm -hmm. I think her making this TikTok, I think it's another example of her not giving a shit about Bahati's feelings. Yeah. Right, like, and I get being caught off guard by Adam Levine and being a singer, and like he certainly has power and influence. But a year, like, on like she claimed that was like a, a year long yeah. affair of like ongoing things. Like it didn't dawn on you at any mo yeah, moment. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm 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 fucking up with someone else's family and life. <laughs> And I just feel like this making this TikTok is like another example of her not considering anyone else's feelings but hers. In her defense, like. She claimed that the reason she made this TikTok was because she sent screenshots to friends who she shouldn't have trusted, and those friends were going to leak the screenshots to the tabloids. So she wanted to like control the narrative. Ugh, but why was she even sending screen? Y yeah, yeah. Like she was screenshotting everything of even him. Like it was like six minutes ago, he sent a message of like, "Want to name my kid after you?" Yeah, but then she, <laughs> which was weird. But the message was a bit like I thought it was awkward and interesting that like she wanted everyone in on the TikTok that it was a Victoria's Secret supermodel that the man that she was, was having an affair with. Yeah, I thought that was weird. But you know what I'm saying? It was like you could tell she like I want people to know it's a big deal. that the guy who I had an affair with mm. was also married to a Victoria's Secret supermodel. So it's like just saying, just saying, like I don't I, know I if that makes that me weird. hot. But like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that I'm hotter than a Victoria's Secret model. No, like, but you like, do the math. It's just like. <laughs> But one plus one equals two. Um, yeah. And then, you know, like, good for her. She's on the, she seems to have the uh, paywall. I don't know if it's OnlyFans or some yeah, other subscription. Fans. Like, you know, make your money. But like, she definitely like had some links available. You yeah. Know, uh, for people to go. Like, she's obviously clearly monetizing off this TikTok. Mm. And all while someone else is experiencing, I'm, I'm sure she doesn't want to deal with this on a national level. 
Yeah. And certainly Adam is number one culprit as it relates to her. It is his fault. But I'm saying as it relates to like her making the TikTok, my issue is her not giving a shit about Adam's wife's feelings. And I don't know how you can convince me. What do you think wives. the appropriate response would have been though for her to message like, hey, I've been talking to your, your husband or... I mean, probably not fuck a married guy or, well, I, or I don't DM. think they fuck. Uh, yeah, I oh, saw a sorry. conspiracy theory that said He that, literally is saying okay. like he just I messaged apologies. her. Or, I will, or, or do what she was doing <laughs> with a married person. Yeah. You know, it seems like they met up. No, well, the, because the, in the DMs, it, there was a DM from Adam saying, uh, you're much hotter in person. But maybe, maybe that it was like a FaceTime. Event. I don't know. I just have a big problem with people like this whole like new phenomenon on TikTok where people are just like exposing, people. exposing yeah. things and monetizing it and clearly getting clout from it. And then all acting like they're they are completely. <laughs> yeah. Like if you tell the truth, you have no role. Like there's no obligation of discernment and deciding like when it's appropriate to share mm -hmm. what truths with yeah. you. It's just like, well, I told the truth. And so how these fine. truths not only. Have, yeah. Like, yeah, Adam, I don't have I'm not like all worried. I'm not really worried about Adam Levine's like. <laughs> in this moment but like it's not just adam levine that this is affecting it's affecting a lot of people and well, then i have a problem with her making some cash off of it totally i'm curious because i feel like you were sort of alluding to this when you were talking about how you don't want to share anything until it's finalized like it seems like everything is kind of a liability like anything you put in writing any yeah. interactions you have is like a potential thing that could get you in trouble or people could twist later and so do you think there's anything lost by living really cautiously and not doing anything that could ever possibly down the line manifest in any kind of way? Like, do you think it, moving through the world with that really guarded approach, do you think there's a cost to that? Or do you think it's just the way you have to be when you have a platform? Yeah, it sucks. Like, cause you're always like worried about shit. Like you're always guarded. And it'd, it'd be good to just like be like, not give a fuck and like run around and not really care. And there's a bunch of people like that. But I think that I don't know. There's a you're in a world. There's a lot of jealousy and a lot of people kind of w want what you have. And I'm sure this girl saw their relationship and the and she wasn't. It wasn't just some normal married man. Like this is a this, this is one of the biggest people like stars in the world, right? Yeah. So she probably saw that as like a way to that she's gonna boost herself. But yeah, I, I think that there's a, a bunch of ways that you can can look at it. But I think yeah, it's it sucks to to be guarded, and but it's the only way you can be because there's, there's so much jealousy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's tough. You got to be you got to be smart and safe. I struggle with that too. Like even with the Adam thing, my big thought was like, how he's just sloppy and stupid, you know? Like I'm not saying <laughs> be smarter, but like yeah. I'm also I was like you, Adam, gross. <laughs> But also, like, what the fuck are you well, doing, man? Like, he's just out the, there just throwing DMs out there to, like... Fuck. From his, like, verified account? Yeah, it's like, well, it's like the one. Olivia Wilde video when she... The, like, the video that she recorded for Shia, Shia LaBeouf. Shia, Shia, Shia. I'm like, that's Wait, a that? phone call. You don't Did do you follow anything the Don't Worry, darling, darling drama? I, I saw some yeah. of it, but I didn't know that she did a so, video. Yeah, but that's this is even worse than that. I'm this just is saying, just, yeah. be smarter. The situation with that was that in so Shia was originally attached to this project eventually was recast with Harry Styles mm. at first it had been oh this is just like a scheduling conflict happens in Hollywood all the time then Olivia Wilde did an interview where she alludes to kind of firing Shia because of her creative process and wanting to protect people on set because he's known for having a very intensive way of approaching acting Shia then comes forward and is like we both know that you didn't fire me like I walked away like and then he releases the receipts and one of them is a video of her talking to him like and begging him to come back. Well, yeah, it depends on how you look at it. Some people are like, this is clearly her <laughs> begging him. Some people are like, this what? is the kind of schmoozing you have to do as a director. Like a lot of directing is kind of like kissing creative egos. Yeah, I get that. But she didn't fire him at that point. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, I don't know when that happened. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't like the smartest thing olivia did yeah. yeah yeah but i guess the whole point of this conversation is like you know you asked harry, harry about like hey do you ever think you're risking anything well we're not defending adam at all for whatever he did dming but we're now living in this world i just ran there's this tiktok uh we'll probably like these uh, i think i sent it but it was like these girls who like when you dm the guys from the bachelor and then they did a tiktok of like parting with the guys from this current season and I don't, you know, I didn't really watch the TikTok. I don't think anyone's looking all that bad. But it's just like, you can't just go have fun and think YOLO. I'm going to yeah. meet some cute girls at a bar who DM'd us and not be worried about them like filming you while you're not paying attention at two o'clock in the morning after you've had a few drinks. 
And uh, these guys probably maybe didn't even do anything wrong, but the optics look like they're just a bunch of fuckboys at a club, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? And everyone's just out there like filming people, posting on their TikTok, getting their clout. And it's just like, no, like you can't, no one's really safe anymore because everyone has this kind of gotcha mentality of their first thought of like seeing anything is like, oh, fuck, you know, yeah. tea, we find, you know, oh, like, <laughs> Yeah, we got you and whatever. And it's just like, it's hard to criticize anyone for being too cautious and too safe mm. and not want, I mean, that's how I feel about the, you know, those things. Also just have good character and be smart. But that's the thing. It's like, even when you think you're doing the right thing, people are trying to get you in compromising moments. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's so fucked up. Like even even in, on like in LA, like you see even other influencers just like filming if someone's a little bit too fucked up or whatever. It is, it, is, it gets a little bit gross. That's half the reason why I didn't want to, I stopped going out and stopped drinking is I'm like, there's just such a weird culture here like where people just will try and do what they can or or if there is drama, they'll involve themselves in it. Yeah. And it's like, why do you need to like, like none of this has got anything to do with you. Like let them figure their shit out and like deal with it. Like why have you got to jump in and like make it fucking 10 times worse? Yeah. Yeah. Silly. Is there anything, this is kind of a pivot, but I'm yeah. just curious because I feel like you're pretty open and loose. Is there anything that open and loose. you would wow. find? <laughs> Wow, that would no one's ever called me open and loose no, before. No, I feel like not in a bad way at all. <laughs> no, no, no. I like the descriptor. Yeah, yeah, good. No, yeah. just like... No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Um, is there anything that like properly embarrasses you? Like not really related to interpersonal stuff, more just like that you would genuinely find embarrassing to do? I think myself, like on TikTok, if you looked at any of my TikToks or like how I used to be on like TV and shit, I'm so cringe. Like I just, I am such an idiot online. Like I don't know what it is. Go back like three months ago to anything you post. So crazy. And you're just like, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. I see about that with like voicemails also. Like, you know, the uh, answering machine you leave, f- like for someone when they call you and you don't pick up. I was like, really, the ones, the first ones you leave are always really embarrassing. And obviously, that's such a smaller scale compared to social media. So yeah. like, the, you know what doesn't embarrass me on mine is when I really lean in, like when I did the Bob Ross shirtless painting videos or the roller skating, because it's already ridiculous. Then I like feel okay with it because. But it's when I'm like being earnest Mm -hmm. that that for me makes me cringe about myself. (laughs) Yeah, there was actually one one time recently I sent a voice note apologizing to a girl because I liked a comment. I didn't know it was on TikTok. I was scrolling. Apparently I liked a comment that wasn't very nice. And I sent a voice note and it was the same situation where I was like, hey, look, I didn't know I did it. I saw it. Someone posted it. I'm so sorry. It wasn't my intention at all because I don't want anyone to feel out of place in this industry. And then she posted it and was just like, trying to get like the views it just reminded me of that there was like trying to like uh, uh, it was really weird like did tiktoks and like instagram stories and like on twitter and i'm like dude like i was just trying to not be i just didn't want it to feel like you're not welcome and especially in this space at all and i didn't know i did it and it could have been photoshop but I, it's really really fucking weird i don't know why i just remember that but no it's, it's weird I, it's weird I, it's people gotta stop fucking doing that i don't know i don't know yeah. how we police that or how of social media platforms but like yeah like we're we're certainly calling out people who need to be called out but there's it's starting to get out of the control where i think it's more collateral damage even that like west elm caleb situation way back when wow you know we really were trying to hunt him down. I found his old Pinterest board. Yeah. I was going deep. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was trying to get in touch with him. <laughs> it was just like the fuckboy of New York who got like called out by like a couple of girls. And he had saved like a few like knobs and like sink hardware on this Pinterest board. And I was like, hello, Caleb. He made a couple, I have found like, you. He made a couple of like Spotify playlists that really Yeah, it was, it was yeah. sort of like really? he was like in perpetually in situationships with various women kind of overlapping. And he wasn't like technically, he wasn't cheating, but he was being he very really misleading and he was whipping anything. out all the same moves. Wow. So he would send them like the same playlist and they kind of like put it all together. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah. Uh, you did an interview not too long ago. You said uh, that you wanted to be on The Bachelor. Yes. <laughs> I've, no, I've been saying it ever since I come off to what the handle. I said I want to be The Bachelor. Like I was like, oh, it'd be so funny. But I don't, again, purely just. What do you think Bachelor Nation would think of uh, Harry? I'd probably get torn apart. No. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. I think it'd be torn apart. Well, it's interesting. I've thought about this because when you told me that he said that. On one app, because like The Bachelor, they love, their audience is very specific. And that is, they like, it's very, it's oversimplified. Because like, you're fascinating. Like, you went on Too Hot to Handle. It's a very different show. And you're just like, I fuck everybody, you know? Yeah, yeah, that was a question (laughs) I saw online. You said you hooked up with everyone on your season. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Did that include the guys? No. Okay. No, no. So not Um, everyone. Lucky for them. No. (laughs) But like you were quite beloved for 
that. Yeah. And that's where I think you could do well. Because the problem with Bachelor Nation, as we've just talked about, is like the pressure of the show makes people want to over edit themselves and pretend that they're like these respectful kings who like just want to talk about like, you know, something bad that happened in their lives and they mm. just want to be like grateful to go out with a beautiful woman. And in reality, they're just normal dudes who will like, you know, have some fuckboy energy as we all yeah do right and then they'll get exposed for like going to a club which is a harmless thing but bachelor nation will jump all over it because it's such a contradiction to what they see on the show yeah so if you came on the bachelorette and like from the moment you were just like i'm a reformed fuck boy <laughs> you know and you were just owned all that it would yeah. be a risk because they who knows how they're gonna fucking edit that but i think it would be interesting i would like to see so, uh, like a harry jowsey like character on The Bachelor who just comes in and just owns truly who they are or who they have been in an authentic, charming way. I honestly think they could come across as authentic and likable, but m most most people go on are just like, you know, I'm just like a good guy looking yeah. for love, you know, and just, <laughs> you know, I just- a, a lot of people do that on our show as well. I'm like, why are you guys thinking about it too much? Just, just be, just talk, just be yourself. Like who cares? Half of it's not going to get cut in anyway. Like you're not going to half is not going to make the final cut. So just say crazy shit. <laughs> and I, I, I fully like blew my mind. Like they were fully just like, are you sure? Like why would you say that in, in an interview? I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like I, the first episode, the first day, I was like, yeah, I got a boyfriend, Dick. They're like what the fuck is that? I was like a little bit above average. And the guy's like, why would you say that? I'm like, because who cares? Like, it's like who, we're already here. Yeah, I was like we're already here. Who gives a fuck? Like the more create, like the more the bigger version of yourself, the more that's going to get put in. So like yeah. if you're like 90% of people aren't there to fall in love. They're there to get some followers. And the producers would love to have you on. I'd say that. I think you would blow people's minds. I, when I, by people, I mean other cast. <laughs> yeah. If he, if they, <laughs> like on Paradise, if they, if they casted Harry to like come in and then you brought in your energy, they wouldn't know. The cat, other cast, would, they'd be like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. like, we're, we're grateful to be here. Like, <laughs> Like I'm only here for you're only here for love, and Harry's just like I, I thought we we're here to like have sex on the beach. I don't like, do we not? Like, <laughs> well, yeah, that could go, sign me up. It could go well. Yeah, um, Harry, you've been uh, fun to chat with. Uh, yeah. Are you down to give uh, someone some texting advice with our texting office hours? Yeah, let's do it. How's it going? Hi, I'm Lily, and I'm 25. Hi, Lily. How can we help? So just to give you some backstory, I've been on a couple dates with this guy. Okay. Um, we had originally met a couple months ago for a date and I just wasn't ready to date. I'm really busy with school and work. So I kind of didn't blow him off, but just said I wasn't ready to go on a second date. Flash forward to now, I reached back out because I recently relocated to the area that he lives. And I was just like, hey, if you want to go get drinks, like, that would be fun. Um, I'm in the area now. So we've been on about three dates in the past couple of weeks. And the last date was a bit awkward. Um, it usually isn't awkward. But I showed up to the last date and I walked in. He was sitting at the bar with my ex's best friend. Your ex's best so, friend. Okay. Your new yeah. date was sitting at the bar. <laughs> With your ex's best friend. And you like walked into like them having a convo? Yep. <laughs> okay. What was so your first my, reaction? Yeah. My anxiety was through the roof. I was like, oh no, they made the connection already. They know that I know both of them. Um, but no, I just walked up. I said hi. And we went, me and my date sat at another table and that was that. He was just saying, hey, that was like my friend from college. I was just talking to him and I was like, oh yeah, like I actually know him. But I had actually met the friend before I met my ex. So I just kind of gave the backstory of that relationship without saying, oh, I actually dated one of his best friends. So we kind of like put that conversation to rest and we went throughout the date. I definitely was thrown off in the beginning, but like kind of recovered and just kept moving forward. And at the end of the date, it lasted about three hours wow. and we said goodbye. He gave me a hug and just, we walked in separate directions. Um, I live in a city where I probably shouldn't be walking home at night alone. And I think he's aware of that, but I did no kiss goodbye. No text when I got Had you home. kissed before on other dates? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So that's where I'm at. So I didn't offer to walk you home, didn't check in that you got home safe. And how and when was this when did this date happen? This happened last Thursday. Okay. And you haven't heard from him at all? Mm-mm. And you want to figure out a type of text to send him to get an I don't update. know if I should even reach out. I mean, I want to. He's not a texter. I okay. definitely have made the first moves organizing the dates, asking him to go out. The text that I sent you guys was setting up the last date. Basically, he was saying he was going out of town. And I said, hey, like, let's get together before you go out of town. So I definitely make the first move most of the time, if not all the time. Damn, he's pretty dry. How did the date go before before the end of the awkward hug and the walk home by yourself? Like how would and and before in the beginning, like, how did you think the date went? I mean, it's three hours it went, is a hell of a long that's time. A crazy date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I thought it went fine. We had hung out like that long before. Um, it definitely felt a little off, though. All right. Like, so, that, something felt off. Yeah. So, but my question do you know, like, if I walked into your situation and you recognize that it gave you anxiety, I would give anyone anxiety, right? Mm-hmm. How much, and you, like, you mentioned that you recovered. But like the truth is, you don't really know how you came across to him. You might have come across kind of anxious, kind of not totally there, a little bit aloof, possibly. I mean, that if I were you, that's how I would probably would have come across. Is I'd be like, "Where's your head at?" kind of thing. Because my head probably would have been like, "What the fuck, you guys talk about?" You know, like now, how did things end with your last ex? Are you worried that he was talking shit? Yeah, things didn't go end great. Okay. Um. So that friend I know does not like me. Okay. Um. So I'm worried that there was maybe a text exchange during the date. Or I don't know. Why do you think they don't like you? Why didn't it end great? For reasons that I probably shouldn't say on the podcast. Um, Just unfortunate reasons. He ended up breaking up with me. So I don't feel any obligation to like not go out and date, even though we live in the same area. But I know that for the for sure that the friend does not like me. Okay. Now, whatever it is that you don't want to share, like, is that something Mm -hmm. like if he shared that with the new guy, how do you think he would receive it? I mean, I think any outsider would be able to like see that it wasn't my fault. Sure. But then again, like I know how girls like talk to their girlfriends to kind of downplay the situation and make their friend look better. I don't know how guys go ahead and talk about those situations. Uh, They could be like that too yeah 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 it wouldn't shock me if he reached out to this guy either and and um yeah, gave him, a, gave him pretty, a very biased opinion i was gonna say guys get pretty territorial as yeah. well like oh hey you know that's my ex like i've had a bunch of moments like that in la i'm like yeah cool grow up i think you should reach out i think okay if for no other reason i think it will it's better than the position you feel now because right now you're you're left with a lot of questions now before you reach out my question to you is as i always ask what do you like about this guy and why is he worth your energy of worrying? Like the fact that, you know, he's kind of ghosted. I get that. That's certainly going to like trigger your ego. You're worried about what he might have said to you. And I get why you care. But none of that means you actually like him. Yeah. So do you care more about finding out what was said about you or the fact that he ghosted you? Or do you care about that you lost someone you actually really were in- excited to get to know? No, I'm definitely excited to get to know him. We're very similar. Um, We have a lot of fun together. I don't get excited about a lot of people like since my last long-term relationship just because I really liked them and I haven't found anything similar or worth being excited about since. So I definitely, he was the first person in a while that like I was excited about. So we definitely should text him then. What should we text? I think you kind of have to put yourself out there. Okay. You know? Even though I've been the one to like set up the past couple dates. Sure. Well, listen, this is just keep in mind, as I always say, like, you know, the the person you are saying you like and you want to get to know is a person who clearly isn't super communicative, not a good texter. Or who let you walk home alone at walk, night let, let, when you probably like yeah. and not a cool thing to do. So you got to take that into account about the person you are getting to know. That is something he showed you. Yeah, uh, that's the one red flag that I'm like, do I even reach out? I would just reach out and and see if he's willing to hang out with you again. And then when you hang out, if he's down, just say, hey, can I just talk? Can I just bring something up? It kind of like I, I've been in my head about it. Something that gave me anxiety. When you ran into so-and-so, like, I'm just going to be honest with you, like, blah, blah, blah. They dated my ex. We didn't really end very well. And I guess I've been really like self-conscious about like anything he might have said to you and just be vulnerable and see if he's listens and see if he's like empathetic and see if he's like, or, or see if he's critical or judgmental. Cause to be honest with you, this is a great like first test in a relationship to see how you might handle you guys not being on the same page. 
And if he handles it poorly, then I would, that would make me feel better about not investing more in this guy. And if he handles it well, where it's just like, yeah, it was kind of weird. I heard this story, but like, I see your side and, you know, and he might hear your side and still like, he might say, okay, well, I still really like you. So let's keep getting to know each other. But like, I'm going to process what you just told me, you know? So like, there's a difference between like processing and listening and just like being a dick, you know, like that dick of like, well, why would you do that? Or like, you know, you'll tell, you, you'll be able to tell if he's taking the, the guy's side. Yeah, if he's like being yeah. compassionate and empathetic. Yeah. If he's asking you a lot of like investigating questions, then he's taking the guy's side. If he's just like more like, oh, I really understand. That's weird. Breakups are tough. Like, mm -hmm. you know, my girl, ex-girlfriend hates me. You know, I didn't feel like I did anything wrong. I would, uh, I would reach out. Okay. And then you also can, from if you hang out again, maybe you can also ask him about like expectations about like who's reaching out to who. You know? Yeah. How does that get brought up though? Like I've been putting in all the effort, put in more effort or. Yeah. I mean, what do you think, Harry? I think it's just when you, I feel like if you're going to talk about everything that's going on, you may as well get it out yeah. on that date. Like when you guys see each other. So I would bring it up like at the end of it, be like, look, also one last thing is that I want to, like, I'm trying to gauge like if you're actually interested in me at all, like his texts are pretty dry. You know, like he's not very good at that stuff. But I mean, you can make a joke, be like, you know, I'm down to chase you because like you really like to be chased. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. text like an HR department. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just tease him a yeah, little bit. Yeah, like you're clearly not a big texter, like whatever. Like this is like a normal, yeah. I also think in general, yeah. like stating like kind of like the facts as you understand them and then like your reaction or like the way you're processing them mm. without like kind of making him the aggressor in that situation of like, hey, like I feel like I, I it seems like I'm starting most of the conversations. That makes me feel like you're not as interested or not wanting to talk to me as much. Like, I just want to see if Maybe that's that first true. text is something like, I respect you playing hard to get, but like... <laughs> but Jesus. <yeah. laughs> but Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm free on Thursday. Let's yeah. get drinks. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. I kind of like that. that yeah. Mm -hmm. That kind of like breaks yeah. the ice for like an actual conversation if he's interested in having it. Yeah, I feel like you could... Yeah, I respect that you're playing hard to get, but damn, it's been a while. Yeah. Also, I'm free <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, that's Because I think the Jesus is just like kind of that. like... Jesus might be a little strong. Let's in, just in say, a text. but it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, I would laugh at that. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah, I like that too. Do we want to send it now? Yeah. I don't know. What's don't... the worst that could happen? He does. He doesn't answer. Okay. I never chase people. I'm just not used to it. There's so nothing. Like, yeah. And this good... is different. Pretend it's us typing the text right now. You should. Just close your eyes. If <laughs> nothing else, you should feel good about yourself that you're doing something different. Like this, the fact that it's new and it makes you uncomfortable. Like that's that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Doesn't certainly doesn't say less about you. Yeah, and it feels good to be chased because then it's passive and it's more like vulnerable being active because then you can like pick apart your own actions. But it's like it's also more empowering. And yeah. I think it's very cool that you're putting yourself out there. You're way more in control with what you want. And if you find out he's not as into you, like whatever. It's not it's not the end of the world. You know, again, he didn't walk you home. So you also sure. have to be careful not yeah. to think you like him more than you do because you're chasing for the first time. And that is a vulnerable position to be in. And your ego is like like kind of beneath the surface being like, don't fuck this up. We don't chase. So like you better fucking close this shit. <laughs> like that's what your ego is saying to you right now. So I think it's really good for you to check in with yourself on a regular basis. Mm. Like, do I like, do I really like them? Especially as you go out with them another time. Like you should really be asking yourself, do I like this guy? How much do I like this guy? Because there, you run the risk if you don't do that. If he does respond, you go out, you run the risk of just making sure that he likes you and he didn't hear any bad news about you and you want to get validated from him that he is excited as you as you are to him. And then you won't do any like checking in or you won't get any, you won't get to know him at all. You won't ask any questions that make you feel like you really learned more about him and whether like not walking you home was like a, a moment of weakness or an actual character flaw. Sure. Okay. I'll send it. What are we saying? All right. Because <laughs> if All I right. don't do it now, I probably won't do it. All right. It. Uh, I respect you playing hard to get. I respect you're playing hard to get. But it's been a while. Okay. Or you could say, but damn. I don't know if I like it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, we can't but, go with Jesus. I know we yeah, can't say Yeah, I know. Jesus. There's no bad ideas in brainstorming yeah, though, so. <laughs> we might go with that, but let's think of other ideas. But yeah. I respect you playing hard to get, but... But damn, I, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. I'm, I'm thinking of like a joke with something that's like really hard. But like, but like, this is like, like, okay, this is not brainstorming. It. No bad ideas and brains. Like, I respect you playing hard to get, but like, this is fucking cement, my guy, or something. You know what I mean? Cement. Like something like, uh, mm. like really hard, like a joke. You'd be like, but, but damn, oh, I'm getting I get hungry. It. I get it. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> but damn, I'm getting hungry. Dinner on Thursday, whatever. Yeah, I like that. I like that. 
But a girl's got to eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have a restaurant in mind? But like, how about dinner on Thursday? Yeah. I, I respect you playing hard to get, but a girl's got to okay. eat. How about dinner on Thursday? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. good. Good team effort, everybody. <laughs> Go team. All right, I'm sending it. All right. And if it he sucks. doesn't write back, the fucker didn't walk you home. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's what I got to remember. Step up, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> And he's not willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Mm. True. Okay. And your person's well, going to make you. you feel wanted from yeah. the beginning. Like your person is going to yeah. make you feel like they are interested in you and that they want to be seeing you. And, and keep chasing. Go after what you want. Oh my God. Like, do we just, the, you tell me, Harry. But like, <laughs> you also, because you're, but like, maybe you will, because you're Harry. <laughs> But I think there's a plenty of guys out there who are struggling with like who are just as nervous as women out there, or just struggling. as nervous. No, I, I, I but like are just as like I don't know if she likes me. I don't know if I should reach out. I don't know if it's okay to chase. Like yeah. we're just we're at a time in this dating climate. Like if you know what you like, just fucking go for it. See if they like you back, and just find out sooner rather than later, and save yourself all this like wasted energy and time of wondering. If he doesn't respond, do like you should still be proud of yourself that you put yourself out there and you shot your shot and you should keep okay. doing it anytime you're interested in because it will like the right person will love that about you. Like if a guy is turned off by a woman chasing him, red flag. Mm. Good to know. Okay. Maybe that's going to be my new approach to dating. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. a huge red flag. If you emasculate a man by saying you like him, trust me, not or worth Or by having time. like feelings, autonomy, actions, yeah. wants, and they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm supposed to chase you. <laughs> no, red flag. Yeah. So all you're doing is like saving yourself time by going after what you want. And I feel like it's so easy to have this narrative or like I have this in my brain all the time of like, oh, but like if you're like really stunning and perfect, then like everyone will want to chase you. And it's like, break yourself out of that. It's a prison. You want to choose, not be chosen. Yes, exactly. All right. Yes, you guys are right. Thank you so much. I needed that boost of confidence. Did you send so the text? Did you send it? Yes, I did. Great. I sent yeah. it. Yeah. No answer yet. I'll have to email an update. All right. Yes. Yeah, let us know. Please email us an update regardless. Um, because no matter what, there is going to be an update. You're going to find some other guy. Anyway, uh, well, congratulations on going for uh, after what you want. Let us know. Um, and remember, he didn't walk you home. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Take care. Harry. Yeah, first, thank you for coming. You've been a wonderful guest. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I hope I haven't been too boring. I just, uh, it's, I'm always like yeah. excited and fun. And then this is like the first time I've ever had to speak about someone that I love and care about and try not to upset anyone. What's the lasting thought you want people to have uh, of this interview and of yourself and of the relationship you are no longer a part of? I think that I the the biggest thing I, is I wouldn't want anyone to to go and send a hate or to send any sort of judgment her way. I'm okay to deal with it, but I know that just yeah, she doesn't deserve any nasty comments or, or anything like that because it is it was my fault, it was my decision, and I just wanted to to yeah wrap things up so I wasn't didn't continue to hurt her. And I I think yeah, lasting thoughts as well as I know I've done a podcast, I'm I'm doing a podcast on it. Well, we are doing it right now, but. I'm very open about my life and I know that people that aren't maybe too, don't know me too well are probably going to be like, oh, why is this guy talking about it? But I just want people to understand that I'm very open about everything that goes on with my audience. So I just, please don't judge me <laughs> for that. I feel like you were very, you you could tell you wanted to be respectful and yeah, I feel like you did her a solid. I, I hope like. so. Yeah. I hope so. Because she's, She's a little golden goose. She's she's on it. She's really special. If you guys ever have the, we just call her a goose. So I don't know if she needs to throw about that. But. <laughs> golden goose. <laughs> no, if you guys ever have the pleasure of meeting her, she just uh, she lights up every room. She's she's really special, and uh, hopefully one day we uh, I can stop being selfish and we can figure it out. And when I'm 35 and we can settle down, <laughs> but see, you, know, you say that she's gonna listen to it. You're gonna uh, tease fuck. her. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's not very nice. Don't do it? that shit. Okay. Uh, Hopefully never. Okay. <laughs> no. Can you do me a favor? Can you take one of my books and read it and let yeah. me know what you think? I will. I will. I I'll really want to so. know what you think. Thank you. Any lasting thoughts for me? Have you got any lasting thoughts for me? Good luck with everything, man. <laughs> Sick. You know, just uh, I think you your future is bright. And the only thing you have to really, I think, worry about is uh, is in those like those moments of you feeling like you need something. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that you're not uh, sacrificing someone else's feelings in the process. Yeah. You know. Which I think is something we should all be mindful of. Not yeah. to, you know, you're not the only one, but work in know. progress. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for this as well. Am I allowed to take this one? Yeah, you can take that one. Okay. Yeah.
cool. Uh, if you're listening, make sure you uh, pre-order Don't Text Your Ex Happy Birthday out next, is it two, in October 4th. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, Very soon. Yeah, it's soon. Are you going to do a book tour? Uh, yeah, we got a press tour coming up in, awesome. in New York. So, But yeah, if, uh, if you're new because you're listening to Harry, uh, it's a great book on all things relationships and dating. <laughs> yeah. So if you like what it. you heard this episode, <laughs> yeah. you know, buckle so much up. more. Buckle up. <laughs> I really appreciate you coming on, Harry. It's been a pleasure getting to know you. Don't uh, forget to send in all your questions at asknick at castme.com. Cast with a K. For all your texting office hours, all your Ask Nick questions, all, all vile files related calls, uh, please, 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 please pre-order my book. It would mean the world. Uh, it's coming out soon. I don't know if signed copies are still available, but either way, go to vilefiles.com and you can still register for our uh, self-love day, which is basically FaceTiming with me and uh, getting a $100 gift card to, you know, treat, do whatever, yourself. treat yourself, you know? <laughs> so if you're into that sort of thing, go to vilefiles.com, pre-order the book, upload your receipt. Either way, I really think you'll enjoy this book. I promise. I mean, the people who have advanced copies have been sending good reviews, but um, anyway, all done. I'm done talking. <laughs> uh, next week, Tino... Uh, to get all, finally, the exclusive with Tino. I know he talked on AFR, but we will have time to really chat with Tino to find out what really happened with him and Rachel. And you won't want to miss that. So, And Billy Eichner is uh, going to be recapping The Bachelor in Paradise with us, the premiere. And talking about his new movie, Bros. So uh, <laughs> get ready. Billy Eichner, everybody. And Tino, big week ahead. <laughs> Harry. Thank it's you. A, it's been a pleasure. Pleasure, guys. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.